I want to tell you something that I think will be very, very ha helpful to you. I want you to think about the troublemakers in your life. I want you to think about the troubled ones in your life. I want you to think about the ones in your life that are hooked on drugs. I want you to think about the ones who don't cooperate, the ones who uh, don't fit in, the ones who perhaps um, are disrespectful, use language that you don't approve of, use substances that you find difficult, people that perhaps you work at. But mostly, I want you to think about people like that in your family. Now, I know that you think it's always somebody else, but they're thinking of you. <laughs> and I want to tell you about how consciousness expands in every direction. When you take these people who are your greatest teachers, the people who have come into your life to teach you how to love them through what it is that they're struggling with, what it is that they are going through. And it's just, there's a, a need there, a need to be loved, that it's very difficult to love certain people under certain circumstances in certain ways, particularly when they behave in ways that are, that are uh, so troublesome to you. Anybody in your life who can push a button and send you into a frenzy is the person who's your greatest teacher. You know why? Because they teach you that you haven't mastered yourself at this moment. You don't know how to choose peace. In A Course in Miracles, there's a wonderful line that says, I can choose peace rather than this. Whatever it is, I can choose peace. I want to tell you about a woman. Her name was Peace Pilgrim. Peace Pilgrim was a woman, uh, an elderly woman, who walked around the country, and all she did, dressed in white, was go into different communities, and she would just talk about peace. That's all she did. She talked peace wherever she went. And in the process of talking peace, she would, uh, there would be no ads, and there was, no one knew her name. She was just called Peace Pilgrim. I believe there's a website about Peace Pilgrim today. And in her journal, Peace Pilgrim, this woman who devoted her life to peace, talked about the Bamemba tribe in South Africa. And I want to share this with you because this could be one way of returning spirit to the place in your home where there's emptiness, where there's hurt, where there's pain, where there's fear, where there's anger, where there's worry. In the Bamemba tribe, Peace Pilgrim says, when a person acts irresponsibly or unjustly, he or she is placed in the center of the village, alone and unfettered. All the work ceases. The entire village gathers around the accused individual. Then each person of every age begins to talk out loud to the accused. One at a time, each person tells all of the good things the one in the center ever did in his or her lifetime. Every incident, every experience that can be recalled with any detail and accuracy is recounted. All positive attributes, good deeds, strengths, and acts of kindness are recited carefully and at length. No one is permitted to fabricate, to exaggerate, or to be facetious about the accomplishments or the positive aspects of the accused person. The tribal ceremony often lasts several days, not ceasing until everyone is drained of every positive comment that can be mustered. At the end, the tribal circle is broken, a joyous celebration takes place, and the person is symbolically welcomed back into the tribe. Necessity for such ceremonies is rare. Now, I'd like to think about that in terms of what I learned since the family meeting that I called a decade or so ago. If I were to do it over, I would place this beautiful child in the center of that circle, and I would have everyone talk about the wonderful things about her about however, wherever we go, she, she just always thinks about the downtrodden. Dad, can we just take some donuts out to these workers, these, these migrant workers? They never get to have just some, can't we just go over there? Come on, Dad, let's just, let's just take them some donuts. Can't we just do something nice for this person? I would tell them about the time that she went over on Mother's Day and, and uh, bought a little, a, a, a little trinket for her mom and, and wrote a little poem next to it that, uh, 
I would talk about how she made us laugh all the time when she was a baby and with that little tongue of hers and the little words that she made up and that funny little way that she walked and uh, her own sense of independence. And, and we would go on and on and on with this. And if we can teach those who are troubled, those who cause us pain, those who use language that we don't approve of, those who dress in ways, those who do things to their bodies that we don't think they should do, if we can just immerse them in a, in a culture of acceptance and love, even if they're behaving in ways that, that seem so anathema to you, if you can just find a way to continue to do that, eventually that spirit has to raise. And your consciousness expands in every direction.